an interesting appeal judgment has just come out. Um, the ground of appeal was that a juror was biased. And why did they suggest the juror was biased? Because the juror wrote to the court and said they were biased. So let me explain. Um, jury summonses went out, and one of the recipients was a police officer. And he wrote back and said, having discussed this with my wife, um, basically, my experience with the police is we only ever arrest people if they did it, and the CPS only go ahead and prosecute people who really did it. So I would have to find the person guilty. Um, this letter obviously got to the judge. He still had to attend court, and the judge said, well, you know, maybe we should chat to this chap. And the judge said, um, you know, we've seen your letter, but you will swear an oath to try this case solely on the end, return a verdict solely on the evidence. Can you do that? And he went, well, yeah. Okay. He said, well, okay, that's fine. Um, I've done another video, which will go up at some stage, about what's called Bushell's case, which is the right of jurors to acquit, regardless of the evidence. But obviously, there's not a flip side that they can convict, <laughs> regardless of the evidence. Um, but in this particular case, the defence obviously objected. Now, we no longer have what we call preemptive challenges. In the US, you know, in a lot of jurisdictions, they give jurors questionnaires, they have what are called voir dire, where they sort of ask them all sorts of things about their attitude, you know. Um, and they have a, usually a limited number of challenges where they say, okay, we don't want you, we don't want you, we don't want you. Um, that has gone now. You can only challenge for cause. Um, the usual thing is we just say to jurors, if you recognise a defendant, give us a shout. Um, but, you know, sometimes it'll happen in a trial, you know, you get a little note going, I know that witness. And then, you know, usually we'll just sort of say, okay, you, you can stand down. Um, but generally speaking, you know, it, it, it's first 12 out of the hat go there. So the defence objected, but it's overruled, had a trial, and there was a conviction. So they appealed on the grounds that, look, this guy, what was he saying in the jury room? And, you know, it's very rare for people to examine what happens in the jury room. The court, though, just the appeal court rejected the appeal and they said, no, he got the standard direction, we just have to trust people. But what is the test for bias? Well, it's actually the two limbs to this test. It's what we call Porter and McGill, because it's after a case, remember Dame Shirley Porter. Um, and there are two limbs, there's actual bias and appearance of bias. Actual bias is where somebody, you know, literally, give, there's evidence that somebody is genuinely biased. I mean, this crops up all the time. It's how you ask judges to recuse themselves or you appeal on the grounds that a judge was biased. And you say, look, there is evidence. Um, it could be something like, you know, what if a judge owns loads of shares in a company that's part of the litigation? Well, if they own lots of shares, then it'll be, you know, arguably, well, you know, that, that's a risk. But if somebody just owns a few, you know, shares in British gas and so it's a row about a gas bill, that probably wouldn't count. But there's also the um, apparent bias test, which is, well, even if you're not actually biased, what would an impartial, reasonable outside observer, knowing all the facts of the matter, think? Would they think, actually, there is a bit of a risk of bias here or there's potential for bias? Um, so that's the te that's usually the application that people make. Um, you can waive this. You, can, you know, judges may sometimes volunteer to recuse themselves, or people will make an application and say you should recuse yourself because of you know apparent bias. You very you never go oh you are biased. I had the reverse ones though, where uh, it was a case where it was a judge who I appeared in front of a lot. Uh, it was a client who I'd done a lot of cases with. And you could see the judge just didn't want another one of these cases. He's like, oh, no, it's him again. Um, and he said, well, actually, um, obviously, there's a bit of a history here, and I have ruled against Mr. X on several occasions, and I've made some very robust comments about his credibility. But we actually wanted to keep this judge for technical reasons. So, of course, I was going, well, of course, there's no actual bias here. And I am sure that an impartial observer, knowing just, you know, how reasonable you are and you only try things on the evidence, would certainly go, well, you know, knowing all the facts, there's no problem here. I mean, the other side's lawyers were, like, really confused, like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> Why are you trying to keep this judge? Um... And what was quite funny, he was doing everything. He said, well, Judge so -and -so's sitting next door. I'm sure he could take the case. He said, oh, no, absolutely. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. And you could see him sort of going, Grr. Um, So we kept him. But this is the thing. You can actually waive a challenge, even if there's a, you know, a prima facie reason for making a challenge. And this cropped up with the Parliamentary Standards Committee. Um, Harriet Harman basically said, look, you know, because of my sort of previous comments about certain people, I wouldn't stand if you asked me to stand down. But they said, no, no, we're quite happy for you to carry on. So that's why, even though people are making a fuss about it now, procedurally there's nothing they can do about it because they waived 
any challenge. Um, but there you go. So like I say, this Port McGill test crops up in all sorts of areas where you are challenging a decision maker, whether it's a judge planning, you know, local council planning, anything basically. Um, you can always sort of raise these arguments. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found that marginally useful. If you did, please consider clicking the like button and also possibly even subscribing.